The ruler of Citadel Adbar was especially impressed with her character, saying, She's almost a dwarf, to his advisors, who were variously amused and horrified. Lady Hope What has befallen? A century ago, Lady Illustrial Silverhand was arguably the most well-known of the Seven Sisters across Faroon for her years of service as the High Mage of the City of Silvery Moon and later as the High Lady of the Silver Marches, a league of Sword Coast North communities dedicated to peace, law, and order to benefit the lowly as well as the high and acceptance of arcane magic that for most of its existence included Silvery Moon, Everlund, Citadel Adbar, Citadel Felbar, Mithril Hall, Sundabar, Deadsnows, Jalanthar, and Quervar, as well as smaller holds and hamlets along the roads between these larger places. Many of the dwarven members of the marches saw the goal of the Alliance as common defense against the orcs of the nearby mountains. Illustrial was beloved in Silvery Moon for her dedication to and love for the inhabitants, who dubbed her Lady Hope for her efforts and vision of a bright future for the North, and her fair and wise rulership that overlaid a steely, ruthless resolve when necessary. The representatives of the Silver Marches saw how resolute and unbending she could be when she saw the need. King Harbrom, the ruler of Citadel Adbar, was especially impressed with her character after clashing with her on several policy matters, saying she's almost a dwarf to his advisors, who were variously amused and horrified. After the League became Lorruar, an illustrial relinquished its leadership to her eldest son, Mer Methramar Erasume, the dwarven leaders of Stuttle Adbar, Stuttle Felbar, and Mithril Hall departed Leruar to become allies, but on their own terms. They would safeguard their scarce war resources against the attacks they knew were coming, the orc and drow invasion accompanied by the darkening, rather than be leeched as they put it, fighting to defend smaller settlements in Leruar. Surface Sundabar was laid waste in the fighting, and this led to Leruar fading away in 1488-DR. Many folk of Leruar came to the conclusion that Illustrial left the leadership of Leruar out of exasperation at the continual bickering burned out by the incessant demands of pushy leaders of the membership but the truth was that Mistra secretly bade her relinquish her public role to undertake a more important mission, safeguarding the wards of Candlekeep against a foreseen by the goddess attack to destroy them at the last possible moment so no one mighty and wise in Arcana enough could twist their power to seize control of the weave. A rumor began when there were no public news arose of illustrial fighting in the Battles of the Sundering, that she had died in the spell plague. But the truth was that illustrial and her sister Laryl had disappeared because they'd shifted shape to take the places of established avowed monks of Candlekeep to personally guard the wards. Hi, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to take a minute to talk about a cool new Kickstarter from our friends, Geek Knights. Geek Knights is a magical medieval gaming community run by a stuntman of over 20 years experience. Imagine your D&D campaign transitioning from just the tabletop to a live action series filmed with full on Hollywood stunts and visual effects. That's Geek Knights. Each season will consist of eight episodes centered around an actual campaign where dice decide the fate of the monsters as well as the cast. Each episode will be chock full of action, adventure, stunts, and visual effects from leading industry professionals. You know, fights done by stunt people. I think this project is great, and I'm excited to share it with you. Listen. Find the link to Geek Knight's Kickstarter campaign down in the description below and consider supporting this action-packed new series. Thanks.
Hi guys, Ivan from Many Realms here. Geeknext actually approached Ed and I at GameholeCon, we both loved what they were doing, and they were cool enough to get Ed in on their early affiliate program, so just so you know, if you do decide to back Geeknext on Kickstarter, Ed may receive a small commission. Thank you, and back to the video. As seen in my novel, The Herald, Larlock managed to absorb the wards of Candlekeep and sought to also drain the mythal of Miss Dranner to take over the weave and become a new Lord of All Magic. However, Telamont Tansel, the ruler of Thaltansar, the returned Netherese flying city popularly known as Shade, who'd become the Chosen of Shar, also planned to drain that same mythal to use its might to transform the weave into a new shadow weave. Unfortunately for them both, the Srinshi returned, as she'd promised over eight centuries earlier, to defend Mistranor and personally bested Larlock, while Alminster defeated Telamont and trapped him in his crashing city, making certain he was destroyed. Alastriel and Laryl, assisted by Amarun Whitewave, who had earlier hosted Alminster's mind when his body was destroyed and was later made a chosen of Mistra, trained by Storm Silverhand in case the battles of the Second Sundering destroyed too many of the existing Chosen, anchored the weave locally to allow Mistra to resume complete control through all of this chaos. So any attempts by Larlock, Telamon Tansel, or the goddess Shar to seize or transform the weave would have failed. After the events of the Second Sundering, Alustral maintained a low profile as she took over Amaroon White Wave's training and assisted in the restoration of the minds and powers of some of the Bailnorn guarding tombs in Mithdranor. She spent nigh a decade on this work until now. Alustral today. From her youth, Alustral has wanted to foster peace between all races and promote the arts in a city or realm like the fabled City of Song, that is, Miss Dranner in its open to all heyday. That's why she went to Silvery Moon and tried to shape it into a haven for magic and its use and bring peace to the frontier Savage North through her leadership of the Silver Marches to prevent the loss of arcane spellcasters and the using up of scrolls, potions, and magic items through endless war. However, she's more than tired of politics and public life, and the restored Mistra wants Elustral to assume a new role, or rather, a return to an old role, that of roving Hand of Mistra, covertly placing spellbooks, spell scrolls, and magic items for mortals to find, and privately giving personal magical advice to individual spellcasters. It was Laryl's turn to assume the heavy daily burdens of political leadership and diplomacy, and Illustrial's turn to enjoy the greater freedoms of much travel and doing small tasks here, there, and everywhere. These have included very recently covertly restocking the spell libraries of Candlekeep and Miss Dranner, and editing the spell libraries of the War Wizards of Cormir without being identified as herself, and exploring exactly what spells are available to Zentrum wizards in the Heartlands, any and all wizards in Westgate, and any red wizards being sent by Zastam on missions outside of Thay. She is enjoying her new role with Gusto, at least for now. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak. This time around, we're tackling this. So three syllables, emphasis on the second one. The Remyani, also known as the Old Ones. They are a brotherhood of mages in the land of Rash. Basically, if you are male in that land, and anybody in that land discovers that you have the gift, in other words, you happen to be male and you can become an arcane spellcaster, you usually get a choice right away, exile from Rashman or joining this arcane brotherhood. You become one of the Vramyani. And if you're interested in more about the land of Rashman, the land of witches, as many other people in the realms think of it, uh, please take a look on the DM's Guild. There is a Rashman guide 
that was helmed by Joe Rasso. It is a great product, and it tells you a lot more about Rasso, the land of witches.